I told my fiancé that I know about his infidelity and cancelled the wedding. He still wants a second chance. Original post. I feel like a horrible person. We are supposed to get married on August 20 in a small ceremony. I'm female 33, been with my fiancé male 34 for 6 years. Engaged for one. The best years of my life. His brilliance in every way. Or so I thought. The accident happened 6 weeks ago. A drunk driver hits my fiancé's car. I spent the worst night of my life in the hospital waiting for answers from the doctors. He went through hours and hours of surgery. His parents and brothers were also there waiting. I've always loved his family and they me. His mom is or was one of my favorite people and we got along very well. She was happy to have me as her first daughter-in-law. She's religious. And when my fiancé was hovering between life and death, she was worried about his sins, so she told me that he cheated on me about two months ago with an ex he bumped into. She explained that it was because of the wedding and the stress of planning it. Apparently, I've been both stressed out and stressing him out. He had a weak moment. It was a one-time thing and he regretted it so much. He asked his parents for advice on what to do and they told him not to say anything. As long as he's remorseful and as long as it was me he wanted, he should forget about what he did and move on. His whole family knew. After the hospital, he moved back to his parents' house because we live in a flat without lifts. I visit him every day. I haven't told him that I know that his family's acting like nothing has changed. They're very happy he's doing better, and understandably so, and my presence by his side is very helpful according to him and his family. Now, both fiancé and his parents are talking about us being able to get married on the day we sat after all. I feel awful because I don't want that. Our relationship was over the moment I found out about the cheating. I stayed because I loved him, still do, and I wanted him to feel better. I couldn't break his heart while he's recovering. I also thought the wedding was postponed and that I or we would have more time for him to recover fully and be strong and independent again so I could leave with clear conscience. I tried to speak to his mom today, but she just started hyperventilating and kept telling me not to do this. She made a mistake by telling me and that I shouldn't take advantage of what she said in desperation to punish him and kill his spirit. He is still recovering and he needs me. I have been thinking since my talk with his mom about everything and I'm so angry at him. I'm ashamed that even when I was worried about his life, I was very angry and resentful. We were supposed to have our wedding in this beautiful manor house that he found that is all-inclusive. With our most important people. My best friend is a DJ and my parents paid for the whole thing even though they're much poorer. So I don't know where the stress has come from. We fixed everything in a week. I'm so angry and I've kept bottling it up since the accident. I'm afraid I'm going to explode soon. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Well, at least you found out how he handles stress ahead of time. I read this expecting to see you ask him and find out it was a lie. I know, right? Tell your parents what's going on right away so that they can cancel the venues and get refunds on as much money as possible. You should also tell them so that they can support you when the in-laws pressure you to just forget and get married. Precisely. I pray Opie takes this to heart so they can be strong, leave and find someone that truly loves them down the line. People that love you don't cheat, or otherwise do things to deliberately hurt you. A very popular saying Redditors use applies here. Never set yourself on fire to keep someone warm. Never. In fact, build a man a fire and you'll keep him warm for a night. Set a man on fire and you'll keep him warm for the rest of his life. This. Opie has every right to feel angry, hurt, and resentful. The fiancé betrayed Opie in the worst way possible. Opie, you've more than fulfilled your duty by standing by him this far. More than he deserves in my opinion. You've been supportive and you've taken care of him. Now it's your turn to take care of yourself. You were entitled to the truth, and by hiding it, your fiancé and his family showed how little respect for you they have. They had every intention of letting you go through with a marriage based on a lie. Break up with him and find someone who truly deserves you and will respect you and be faithful. Your future mother-in-law is solely looking out for her and her son. She's not concerned about you and your feelings. She told you something devastating only because she was worried for her son's soul if he didn't live. Now she's wanting you to keep quiet only because she will look bad for telling you. Your fiancé is looking out for himself too. He knows what he did was wrong. That's why he confessed to his parents and not to you. Please look out for yourself. Because these people are not. Facts. As soon as mother-in-law told me he told her and they said keep quiet, I would be out. Yep. In fact, I would have used the time he was in the hospital to either clear everything of his out of the apartment or pack up all my stuff. Let mother-in-law and all his family that knew about his cheating help him with his recuperation.
And now for the update. I've written here three days ago before I talked to my fiancé. This is after I told him I know about his cheating. I started by telling my parents, who are paying for the wedding about what happened and that I'm cancelling the wedding. Hopefully they can get back some of what they paid via their home insurance. I have told them that I'm going to pay the rest of the damages. My dad refused. I insisted. It's not up to them. Since my fiancé still lives with his parents, I felt that I would be outnumbered if I went alone to end it. Text or a call wasn't an option since it meant a lot more to me than that, and I really wanted to see his face and ask why. I also want him to see my hurt. I don't want it to be comfortable for him. Cheaters must see the hurt they caused and hopefully learn from it. So I took my mom with me and when I told him that the wedding was off and the reason why, he started crying. He told me all things they say in desperation. He was foolish. He didn't think. He was stressed out. He was scared. It meant nothing. He regretted it. He didn't want to tell me because it meant nothing and he didn't want to hurt me. I should give him a chance to prove himself and his loyalty. He can ask his parents to pay for the wedding. We can't postpone the wedding indefinitely. I can take the apartment and he will live with his parents, as long as it takes for me to forgive him. I haven't cried so much as I did when I was listening to his BS and afterwards on my way home. How could he do this to me? He didn't give me a satisfying answer to why he did this to me. To us. I have cried myself to sleep every night since the accident, and yet I cried like I've just found out. I'm going to stay in the apartment that we bought together and he will stay with his parents. Prices have gone down these last couple of months and we both agreed that we don't want to sell for less than what we paid. But the moment it goes up again, we're selling. I have started packing his things now and tomorrow I'm renting a van to move his things to his parents' house. Sorting out his stuff and packing his clothes made it real for me. I didn't expect it to be so emotional. Why do I still love him so much? He has been texting me and he has called me twice. And we talked mostly about mundane stuff but also about us and our relationship. His mom has called me to say that she felt guilty for first not advising him to come clean, but even for later divulging a secret to me without his permission. She was disappointed that I took advantage of her moment of panic, but that she understands that I'm hurt. She said he will do his best to win me back. I'm a bit irritated about the fact that none of them, including my parents, believe that it's really over and I don't have the energy to prove my point either. I just need some alone time now and some peace and quiet. As many have said, you should not get back with him. But I will add something about this. He didn't give me a satisfying answer to why he did this to me. Unfortunately, there is never a satisfying answer. No matter what his reasoning is, you will always find yourself thinking, but if he loved me, he would not have done this to me. That's because you are not a cheater. A great piece of advice I once read is that it is not healthy to dwell on the why someone hurt you. If you cannot understand why someone would hurt you in that way, it is because you are not like them. And that should be your closure. This is fantastic advice. And it can turn a few months or years of searching for the answer into moving on and up with my own life. Bravo! If his mom calls again, do not answer her. She is not responsible for the situation. Her son is, and she needs to butt out of it. Plus, she continues to make Opie the bad guy and has no good intentions when reaching out to her. Exactly. Stop engaging with his mom. He is the cheater. Opie did nothing wrong. And the fact that the mom is berating her for dumping a cheater just because the information was given in a moment of weakness, as in guilt, she does not need to ignore it. Not to mention the mother was one of the people who encouraged him to lie to Opie. She sucks. Exactly. You took advantage of her moment of panic? Nope. She came clean to you and she thought he was going to pass. And his immortal soul was in jeopardy or whatever. And you made decisions based on the truth. If you need them to believe that there is some hope for the relationship while you get your head together and work on a plan, you can always tell them that you need space. And space means no contact. Your ex's mom is a bit delusional. Who in their right mind says she's disappointed that you took advantage of her panic? You dodged a bullet here, OP. Because it's disgusting to see your ex's mom gaslight you like that. And as for your ex, he's only upset he found out. Otherwise, he didn't feel guilty about it at all. If he didn't respect you enough to not cheat and blame you for the wedding stress, what's going to happen when, and if, you get married and something stressful comes up? Take your space from everyone and take the time to heal and process everything. Now, for the last story... Mother-in-law, 64, female, is convinced that I, 37, male, am going to divorce my wife, 35, female, and is trying to convince my wife of the same. 
My wife and I have been together for 8 years and have been trying for our first child for around 6 months now. We were keeping everything under wraps. But my wife recently had to take leave from her job at the advice of a doctor, related to trying to get pregnant and existing medical conditions. We decided it was time to let our parents know, as keeping my wife's leave under wraps was going to be impossible. My mother-in-law responded to the news by saying that she needed time to process the information. I walked into another room, and my mother-in-law called my wife back, made sure I couldn't hear the conversation and proceeded to tell my wife that she has concerns, and she didn't think that we should have a child together. Mother-in-law's concerns were a complete blindside to both my wife and I. My wife graduated approximately two years ago, and my father-in-law told me ahead of her graduation party, without my mother-in-law's knowledge, that father-in-law and mother-in-law were buying us a set of cornhole boards. During the graduation party, I said something about the cornhole boards to my mother and my mother-in-law realized that I knew about the boards before the party. Instead of asking me how I knew, mother-in-law went to father-in-law and asked if he knew how I found out. Father-in-law lied. He denied telling me and they came up with a theory that I must have snooped through their email account when fixing their computer. This lie has now balled out of control to the point that my mother-in-law now believes that I'm installing tracking devices on my wife's person and vehicle. I am wiretapping her phone and I am tracking her at her job daily. She told my wife that I am going to wait until the child is born, divorce my wife, take the child, and use this medically necessary leave to claim my wife is not capable of being a parent. My wife went to talk to her mother in person that night. My mother-in-law would not even allow my father-in-law in the room and said that our opinions, mother-in-law and father-in-law, match and he did not need to be there for the conversation. She told my wife that for the last two years, I have shown red flags that needed to be addressed before we consider having a child. When pressed about if mother-in-law even believes we should remain married, she refused to answer the question. Mother-in-law went so far as to compare me to her awful ex-husband, my wife's biological father who my wife cut off contact with 12 years ago. My wife and I are furious and hurt that they have let things get to this point without talking to us. Is there any way to restore this relationship with my wife's parents? If so, what steps should be taken? My wife and her mother have always been close and never keep secrets from each other. But this was left festering for so long that I feel it has become insurmountable. My father-in-law has always been scared to anger my mother-in-law and would never come clean about telling me about the cornhole boards at this point, as my wife and I believe it would jeopardize their marriage. Now for the advice. The heck is wrong with these people? Your mother-in-law and father-in-law are going way beyond the limits of reasonable behavior considering there is no proof or warranted concern for it. She has issues in taking it out on you and a wife. He created this elaborate lie that is getting more and more infected with each passing day. How could your father-in-law allow that situation is beyond my understanding. But given that he's scared to anger her shows a disturbing relationship. Your in-laws are entire red flags. I don't see any way to repair the relationship unless therapy is involved. Yeah, the father-in-law is super complicit in this situation. He has probably learned to cope with living with mother-in-law by living conflict avoidant to a fault. She's absolutely nuts. Look, you're going to have to throw your father-in-law under the bus, since he's had no problem throwing you under a train of semis. I would just say, remember the cornholes? Father-in-law told me. And move on. She'll either believe you or not, but don't keep a secret for him anymore. I agree that father-in-law needs to be thrown under the bus, but I think wife should do it. Personally, I think with issues like this, the adult child should take the lead so they know husband and wife are on the same page and that the in-law adult child is not controlling the adult child. I think this crazy mother-in-law will jump to that conclusion anyway, and it's up to wife to tell her calmly and in a direct manner that she's wrong. Put them both on a timeout afterwards. Mother-in-law sounds very controlling anyway. Your father-in-law threw you under the bus ages ago and won't fess up to his wife because somewhere along the way, she started keeping his balls in her purse. I'd say it's time to throw him under the bus. It's not right that you're suffering the repercussions of his lying. Your wife needs to deal with her mom, her family, her responsibility. Boundaries need to be set in place. She either stops the ridiculousness or you and your wife, and potential children, will be making yourself scarce. I'd say it's time to throw him under the bus. It's time to go to Detroit and design the bus. Break into the factory at night to build a bus. Take it to the proving grounds to test the bus. Then drive the bus to your father-in-law's house 